Let's get started on your notes over using the product rule to simplify expressions. So the notes you're about to see might look slightly different than what you have on your paper, but all of the content is the same. So just follow along and fill in your notes. We call it the product rule because we use it when we're multiplying two terms that have the same base and there are exponents involved. So this little formula right here is what's gonna be on a formula chart. Typically, it looks like this. There may be other variables involved, but it looks like this. And the product rule states that a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. So it states that when we multiply two or more terms that have the same base, we can add their exponents. So let's look at an, an example of this. So in this first one, I have two to the power of three times two to the power of four. Well, I have the same base and I'm multiplying. What can I do with my exponents when I have the same base? I can add them. So two to the power of three times two to the power of four is the same thing as two to the power of three plus four, which is two to the power of seven. I'm just simplifying it. And this, I'm simplifying it by using the product rule. That's what this is. So why does it work? Two to the power of three is two times two times two. Two to the power of four is two times two times two times two. And I'm multiplying these together so how many twos am I multiplying by itself? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two to the power of seven. Well, if I take that rule and apply it in the second problem, it looks the same, but my base is now a variable. X squared times X cubed. So we're multiplying these terms. What can I do with my exponents? I can add them. Is the same thing as X to the power of two plus three which is x to the power of five. So that's all we're doing today. Our product rule, when we multiply, what can we do with our exponents? We can add them. So let's get started on these notes down here. Okay, x to the power, number one, x to the power of four times x to the power of six is gonna be x to the power of what? 10. I don't need that equal sign there, but it's x to the power of 10. What about this one, number two? What's y times y to the power of 10? A lot of students want to write y to the power of 10, but I encourage you, if it's not raised, if you don't see an exponent, what can you always write there? One. So y by itself is the same thing as y to the power of one. So a lot of students, when they do this, kind of reminds them, oh yeah, I need to add my exponents. So y times y to the power of 10 is gonna be what? y to the power of 11. What about number three? It looks a little different. I took away this dot because typically you don't see that in algebra one or upper level math. You see it look like this where we have parentheses. When you see something right next to the parentheses like that, what do we do? We multiply. So now I've got m, can I put a one there? Sure. Times m squared times m to the fifth, all the same variable. What can I do with my exponents? I can add them. m to the power of eight. One plus two plus five is eight. Number four, it looks a little different. What have I added? I've added coefficients in front of these variables. Now we're using the product rule to simplify, to simplify expressions involving exponents. The product rule, I can add my exponents when I'm multiplying two terms that have the same base. Well, these coefficients, you're just gonna multiply together first. What you've done with numbers, you will always do with numbers. Those rules haven't changed. I've only added in this new rule that deals with exponents. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I solve number four or simplify number four is I'm gonna multiply five times six. So numbers first, five times six is 30. 
then I can simplify these variables and their exponents using the product rule. So x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 5 is x to the power of 8. Let's look at number 5. Okay, I've got multiple variables. I've got coefficients in front of some of my terms. What do I do first? I multiply my numbers. Numbers, then variables. Coefficients, then variables. So negative 6 times 4 is what? Negative 24. And then I'm going to look at one variable at a time. I have two different variables, but I can only use this product rule if they have the same base. So I'm going to look at each variable at a time, and I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. So I have x right here times x squared. Okay, if I want, I can put a 1 there. How would I use the product rule to simplify that? x times x squared is x cubed. Now let's move on to y's. I've got a y squared right here and y to the fourth. If I use the product rule, what do I get? y to the power of 6. And that's how I simplify that one. Let's look at number 6. So the first thing I like to do is if you don't see a number in front of a variable, what can you put there? You can always put a 1 there. And then we're, oh, that's a little too much. And numbers, then variables. So I've got negative 1 times 3. What is that? Negative 3. And then I'm going to look at each variable at a time because I have multiple variables. So multiply your numbers, then apply the product rule with these variables and their exponents. So I've got x times x squared. What is that going to be? x cubed. Then I've got y times y times y. What is that going to be? y cubed. All right, let's move on to number seven. And I'm going to switch colors just because I want to. Number seven. I've got a fraction here. So numbers, then variables. Coefficients, then variables. So one-sixth times negative three. What is one-sixth times negative three? It's negative one-half. And now let's look at each variable at a time because I have multiple variables. I've got an x squared times x squared. What is that? x to the power of 4. And then don't forget this y. Just because I'm not multiplying it by anything else doesn't mean it goes away. We just bring it down, okay? So it doesn't go away, it stays. A number 8, 0.5 and 12 are my coefficients. So let's multiply those first because what we do with numbers is what we always always have done with numbers. This is your rule for the exponents. So 1 half times 12 is what? It's 6. And then what can I do with my variables and their exponents? Since I'm multiplying this term times this term, I can use my product rule, which tells me that I add my exponents. So x to the power of 1, I can always put that there if nothing is there. And then I have an x squared. What is that going to give me? x cubed. I mean, I'm going to erase some of these arrows. It's a little much. Okay. And then I've got a y here, and I'm multiplying it by y to the fifth. What do I get there? y to the sixth. And then I've got this lone ranger over here, the z. It doesn't go away. It stays. Number nine. Ooh, it's a lot going on in this one. What do I do first? Multiply one half times negative 4 times 0.5, which is also 1 half. So why don't you pause the video and do that now? 1 half times negative 4 times 1 half is negative 1. And now let's look at our variables one at a time. Let's look at the a's first. I've got a squared times a. And I can do this because remember, multiplication is commutative. What does that mean? It means that the order in which I multiply doesn't matter. That's how I'm able to just do this. So a squared times a is a cubed. I have a b here and a b here and a b squared here. What is that going to give me? b to the fourth. And then what can I not forget? This lone ranger over here. C. Can't forget it. Let's look at number 10. What do you notice that's different about number 10? 
Number 10 has a plus sign in it. So be very careful because this rule only applies when you're multiplying. That's why we call it the product rule. What is a product? It's the answer to a multiplication problem. So that's why we call it the product rule. So if we think about our order of operations, which tells us PEMDAS, it tells us we need to multiply and divide before we add and subtract. So I need to multiply these two terms together before I add it to this term. And remember, I can only add it if they're like terms. So let's see. Numbers, then variables. I've got a negative 2. If I want, I can put a 1 there. So I get negative 2. And then I apply my product rule to x squared and x squared, and I get x to the fourth. And then what happens to that y? It doesn't go away. It stays. And you know what I like to do? If I see plus a negative, I like to combine it to just this, negative 3x power 4, y. So now I've got two terms here that I'm combining, and I can only combine them if they're like terms. Are they like terms? Yes. x to the power of 4y, x to the power of 4y, they have the same variables and exponents. They're like terms, therefore I can combine them. So I, can, I combine them using the coefficients. Negative 2 and negative 3 make negative 5, and then I like to say last name stays the same, x to the power of 4 times y. There you go. That's your answer. Let's move on to number 11. There's a lot going on in this one as well. I've got some multiplication here and then some subtraction right here. So order of operations tells me I need to multiply first. So let's do that. Okay. Uh, coefficients then variables. So can I put a 1 there? Sure. 1 times 4 is 4. And then I'm going to apply my product rule with these variables and their exponents. So I've got m squared times m cubed. That's m to the power of 5. And then I've got an n here. And then right here, minus a negative. I really like to make one sign in front of each term when I'm combining. If I ever see minus a negative, I just change it to a plus. And then now what do I do? What can I do? Well, they're like terms m to the power of 5n, m to the power of 5n, so I can combine them. I combine them by combining their coefficients. 4 and 5 makes 9, and then last name stays the same. So on 10, 11, and 12, it's where we're incorporating this combining like terms, or when we're adding and subtracting monomials into the product rule. So that's when it starts to get a little tricky when you're doing multiple um, things in one problem. So let's look at number 12. Okay, I've got some multiplication here, some multiplication here, and then some addition here. Order of operations tells me I need to multiply first, so let's multiply. I can put a 1 there if nothing is there. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then I've got x squared times x. What is that going to be? x cubed, y squared times y is what? y cubed. So we're looking at one variable at a time. Okay, let's go to this next one over here. 4x cubed y times y squared. Can I put a 1 there if nothing is there? Sure. 4 times 1 is 4. And then I've got x cubed. And then y times y squared is y cubed. And it's positive, so I'm adding. Can I add them? Are they like terms? They sure are, so let's add them by adding their coefficients. 2 plus 4 is 6, last name stays the same, x cubed, y cubed, and that's my answer. And that concludes your notes over the product rule for simplifying expressions involving exponents. I hope it was helpful.